Hi guys, welcome to another video. This is going to be kind of an unstructured uh, perfume talk about what I've been trying lately. I've done some follow-ups of some fragrances that I've, you know, they've been laying around and I want to give them another chance and I'll just tell you a little bit about some new things I got my nose on. Um, recently I had a nice little kind of perfume walk around town together with uh, the owner of a perfume shop, the one I visited up north. The ones of you who follow my channel know that her name is Polina. She's from Ukraine. Uh, she runs a shop. She has a physical shop. Uh, you have to make an appointment to go there, though. It's not open. Like, it doesn't have opening hours. Uh, and then she has, like, a web shop. And she was in Stockholm for a few days and just kind of wanted to, you know, look around and um, sniff perfume. And, and we met her, me and my friend Clara. And we went to some shops together, and it was fun. And we sat down for coffee, and she brought some things for us to try. Um, so why don't I start there? Uh, so she's what she does she she tries to she just has realized that she can't compete with the discounters therefore she doesn't have amouage for example um, and she doesn't have Parfums de Marly or Inicio or anything like that but she has uh, brands that n she like no other Swedish store sells I mean there's a little bit of overlap but she really tries to avoid that and so she's kind of constantly on the hunt when she goes to Milan for example she she tries to you know to, to um, meet new perfume houses that you know might not have um that, are, that might not be sold by any swedish uh detail detail what do you call it retailer retailer i think it's called but one one um one brand that she's considering is called uh neshama and it's israeli but i think he works out of britain and it's kind of a one-man show so far uh just like centauri um, his name is like Simon, let me see, Simon Shar is his name. And I think these are the only three fragrances that he's made. And up until now, they've only been for sale on Etsy, uh, E-T-S-Y, which is like a platform where they only sell either handmade or vintage products and craft supplies. So he sells these in like 15 milliliter bottles, which I think is a really good way to start out. I'm surprised that so many like artisan type of perfume houses start out with 100 mil. I think this is much a much better idea. And these are X-rays, although I don't really agree with that they have X-ray performance. Uh, maybe he uses a lot of naturals, I'm not sure. I did do a little bit of research on him, let's see. Um, I mean, he does everything himself. Uh, and these three fragrances, there's, there's, there's only like one or two like reviews on these fragrances um, on, online so far. But I really liked all three of them. And they're like super soft and easy to wear fragrances. Even though none of them are really my, like my style of fragrance, I still like them all. And they're called, one is called Sandalwood Oud. Um, or I think it's like the ninth wave sandal sandalwood oud. Uh, it's described on on I think it's Perfumo as an aquatic cit citrusy fragrance, which it doesn't. That is very misleading. I don't think it is that at all, uh, because it has like woodsy notes. It has oud. It has uh, sandalwood, and it's really really nice and easy to wear. Really really like this. Uh, and the other one is called Jasmine and Tobacco, and I don't like tobacco, and I don't, I'm not particularly fond of Jasmine either, yet it was a very, very nice, let's see if I took notes on this one, let's see, maybe I didn't, um, I, I need to try them again, I've only given, this, these are only like first impressions, but I have, I have all, I've had them on my skin once, all of them, um, Jasmine and Tobacco is really beautiful, and then there's a third one, and it's called Osmanthus, and it's also super beautiful. Um, they seem kind of really natural. Um, it's definitely like, oh, like all three were like, I want to wear them again. So I'm going to wear them like again, and then I'm going to pass them on to Clara so she gets to try them too. She really liked the sandalwood and oud fragrance. Um, so maybe this is a brand that will, you know, come up more and we get, can, we can buy it in our Swedish shop. We'll see. But I, I, it's interesting to see like how she can't, she can't just go by like the fragrances that she likes, this owner. She has to also think about competition and that, because of course, you know, like us frag heads, we compare prices before we buy. We don't like throwing money away. And especially if you buy lots of fragrance, you can't just buy, um, 
yeah, you, you look around and see where you can get the best price. So she wants to be alone about her fragrances. But uh, now I, I want to tell you a little bit about, about a house. No, before I do that, before I do that, yeah, I'm going to tell you about this house called, a Polish house called Boho Boko. Uh, but before I do, I want to tell you where we went. Um, we visited NK, you know, our big department store, and sniffed some fragrances. Uh, and then we went to Cow, and which is another, another um, like, high-end perfumery. They have really, like, expensive makeup and skin care, but also lots of niche fragrances. Um, plus a few designers like Homme de Garçon, which is maybe more considered a niche house, although it is a designer. Um, but they have... You know that I bought this in Paris, Undamaris um, 8 from Philippe Sorsonelli, Extrait de Musique. The, the cow used to have this line, and they, uh, I just saw this on a shelf, and this is Voix, okay, I don't know if it's because it's so light here, it's, it's, it says Voix Humaine, Voix, V-O-I-X, Humaine. And I was, and then I saw the price on here, it says a thousand Swedish crowns, which is like really cheap. Um, I mean, I paid 165 euros for my Undamaris in Paris, um, and this is this would be like like a hundred maybe, you know. So, um, and it's it's this is a really really good perfume, but they don't sell it anymore. So this was just kind of like a tester standing on the shelf, and and the guy who runs the shop, his name is Christian. It's he and him and his wife. Um, he, he he said that you know he would gladly give it to me, but he knows that I don't you know accept free bottles. So he, he gave it to my friend. <laughs> he gave it to my friend, and the first thing she does is she she gives it to me like a personal gift. So I feel a little bit like a cheat because it did come from a store, uh, but he's not selling it anymore. Um, and I I love this fragrance, and I um, I was you know sniffing it in Paris, and I, there's about this much left, like maybe thirty to forty percent left. So it's not a full bottle, and I'm now I'm being really transparent, but it felt like it came from the store, and um, I, I mean I already was positive, so I don't I, I don't feel the pressure to be positive because it didn't just arrive like it didn't just land in my lap, uh, so I I decided to accept and keep it, and then they said you know Clara said why don't you just like not mention it on your channel that would be another way, but I just it's too good not to mention it's kind of a it's an, this is the easiest wear, I think, from the whole whole line. It's an incense fragrance, but it's like really ambery and vanillic and really easy to wear. Like this is almost a safe blind buy. I mean, had this been the price now, I'm sure that this was the price like maybe a couple years ago when they had the whole line. I'm just guessing. And then they just had the tester bottle kind of remaining there. Um, I wrote the notes down. So it has LME, this incense note in the top, with bergamot and cardamom, but it's not like a, like a gourmand cardamom note. It's not nothing like Remember Me from uh, Javoy. And it has ambrette, jasmine, and orange blossom in the mid, olibanum, which is frankincense, uh, milk mousse, so it is a little bit milky and creamy, vanilla, leather, musk, and amber in the base. Really, really a good fragrance. Oh, so good. Um, it's a super easy reach. Um, I mean, I'm going to whiz through this amount pretty quickly, but I'm, I'm just at least telling you that this was, uh, gifted to me kind of in a weird way, but it was now from a personal friend. Um, anyway, I guess there's no rule without exceptions. And these fragrances, they were like already, oh, you see, they're not even full. This, I'm, I've decided to accept things like this. Uh, and I'm going to pass this on as soon as I'm done. But this is my, I mean, this is my chance to getting, you know, of getting my nose on new fragrances. And uh, what else did we try? There were, there, there were, I'm kind of um, getting into this Orme perfumes. Um, they have like almost all natural ingredients. They have a perfume called Toi, Toi, Toi. And they have one called, um, God, I can't remember all the names. They have these Art Deco wooden tops that like, they come, they're like magnetic. Uh, they're really cute, um, the presentation. Um, but they're they're really expensive, but I've kind of been sniffing those lately. Then I decided, because I have such a good impression of Cartier fragrances, after after trying and finishing my decant of Le Baiser du Dragon, um, the Dragon's Kiss, you know, like this old classic um, Cartier fragrance. It's not super, super old. It's not like 50 years old or anything, but it's older. And I think discontinued, or there might be a newer formula. 
and I think I tried the older formula. I was I really was a little bit hooked on it. It's kind of like a nutty, liqueurish kind of patchouli. And then I tried Declaration on my trip. I really like that too. Um, and there was something else too from, from Cartier. So I decided to go back and try the Ouds again. One of them I sent to Julia, Oud and Amber. I'd like to hear what you think of it, Julia. Um, but I decided to keep these. One is Oud and, Santal, Oud and Sandalwood. Oud and Santal, and there's one called Oud and Mint, which is Oud and Mint. And I just decided that um, these just don't meet my expectations of a good fragrance at this price point. These are like super expensive fragrances. Um, I think that the mint one is really weird. The, comp the, 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 the clash of notes is kind of like weird to my nose. Um, it's very kind of like herbal and oody, but it's, it's a very like a beginner type of, type of oud. There's no animalicness at all in it. And I just find it's, I don't know. I, I just don't like, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I think I'm, I'm done with this now. I've given it several chances because it was, I only, I had, I had actually passed these on to Clara to try them, and she was kind of ready with them anyway, but I asked for them back <laughs> because one of you guys said that I must give them another chance, and now I have, um, but I still, you know, I, I, they're not full bottle worthy to me. Ah, these are perfume concentration. I really didn't know it. Um, I thought they were EDPs. They're not exceptionally potent or anything, but the Oudin Santel is a very warm and easy wear. It's... Um, it's not skanky at all, but I find that it just, that all the notes are down here. It's just kind of a really bassy fragrance. And it need, I keep thinking what I would like to add to it. I want to add some florals. I want to add some vanilla. I want to add, you know, something, um, maybe something resinous to it. I think it's kind of lacking some. Oh, it smells really good from the bottle like this, though, or from this vial. I love their samples. I think they're so cute and they're really easy to kind of like, put the like click out the drops so you just get one drop and you can kind of like um but I don't think I'm gonna put any more time into this there, there's so many better fragrances and if I have to layer it it's not really a, a good fragrance I mean I don't mind layering but that's I do that sometimes like when I'm when I found like I have something too heavy on or something that's too light or something too sweet then I can kind of like bring the sweetness down by adding something woody or something citrusy or if something is too dark, I could put something bright on top. But that's more like an exception, I'd say. I'm, I'm in general not really into like buying things to layer them. I would that that's kind of for me. I think that the perfume should be complete, like on its own. Okay, but today, the reason I wanted to go through these today, this is a house that I saw in Paris, and that I have I think tried one time earlier at my friend's house, and it's called. Boko, Boko Boko. It's from Poland. And the fragrances look like this. Oh God, it's so light. There, there you can see. They've got all different colors of juice. And it's, it's it, the creative director, and I think also perfumer behind this house. His name is, God, his name is like Michal. I can't remember his name now, but he was like first into fashion and beauty. And he learned, he trained to become a hairstylist. And then he thought that that was not enough. So he decided to create perfumes. And I think they've been a little bit criticized because they're very commercial and they do commercials the way designer um, companies and brands often do, you know, like with like some beautiful actor and, and then you see the fragrance, you know, it's kind of like, but I like their, the choice of their, you know, the models because they have someone who's actually quite old, like older than I am, like not a young model, um, like someone maybe even like 70-ish, a very, very beautiful 70-year-old, but like she's... It looks like she's not wearing anything, but it's only like filmed from here. And then she was where, I can't remember the fragrance she was wearing. They have like 14 fragrances now in their house. And this particular discovery set has 10. Now they offer a bigger discovery set, like I think with all 14. And you can get them for like 75 euros, which I think is a lot of money. But um, a full bottle of uh, Boho Boko costs now 150 euros. And when they started out, they were 99 euros. So they have, and that was in 2016. That's not even that long ago. So they've actually, uh, they've gone up 50%, which is kind of a lot. And you know, I think they're quite good. I'm just going to give you the, the whole, I'm not going to go through them one by one. I just find that, you know, life's too short and it's too boring to listen to an in-depth. There are lots of people that, that are, have reviewed these. None of them I found though are like my kind of review, reviewers. Like you can totally trust them. Um, 
I think they've like been sent quite a few bottles and the set and um, they kind of review everything and everything's positive. Like for example, Tama Lisa, I had, um, she did I think say, you know, like this one wasn't my favorite or something like that, but she'd also been gifted like five bottles and she's, she's written like in the title how impressed she is. So I can't take that quite seriously. I didn't even watch the whole thing. Uh, I, I don't like her style of um, describing fragrances. I, I think the problem is she's got so many followers and I don't think that she is completely honest. She's overly positive about everything. I did try to find like a declutter video from her or something negative and then I finally found one video where she had written, you know, like fragrances I will not be buying. And I started watching it and it was like one million. It was um, Alien from Mugler. It was um, one from Dolce & Gabbana, basically like top 10, you know, like designer, older designer fragrances. And of course she's not gonna be buying them. Why would she? Um, I wanna hear, you know, like some, some, sh some bad talk about, you know, new fragrances, then, I could find confidence maybe in listening to her, but will not do it. Another one who had like a total buying guide on, um, maybe I'm mixing these two up. Her name's Haley something, Haley Clow, Clauf? I don't know. I think she spells her name uh, C-L-O-U-G-H. I don't even know how to pronounce her name, but maybe she was the one. I think she's British. She said that she has like a buying guide for Stefan Humbert Lucas 777. Maybe she was the one that was gifted uh, five bottles. She puts like a little star like on each one that was gifted. I mean having a buying guide when you've been gifted all that stuff and she adores the house. Well of course, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I just can't watch that. So I don't recommend these two girls. These two women. Sorry, they're not girls. Um, okay, so what I like about this house, they sell them at, at like, like a niche house, like a typical niche kind of presentation. All the bottles look the same. The juice color is different and each fragrance is kind of like highlights uh, two dominant notes. And I think actually the Discovery set is really cute. Got it so hard in this light. But they, they're in these little cardboard boxes and you can kind of pull them out with this little, um, I'll just show you one like this. You can pull them out like one by one like that. Oh, it's hard to see what it says. This one says eucalyptus and then it says eucalyptus and then there's like a dot patchouli. So they have like two notes. And then you open this little box and there's the sample. Um, and then they're kind of in a row so you can kind of like, you know what the, what the fragrance is going to look like if you want to buy it. Um, and I, I, I thought they were real. I thought, I think they're pretty nice in general. They're pretty nice. Mm, but would I buy any of these? <laughs> no, I probably not. If I would buy one, I would buy the one called Eucalyptus Patchouli, the one I just showed you because I found it kind of the only one that had some uniqueness to it. Like every other one in this box reminds me of something else. And even like I, I looked on Fragrantica and like several of these have like, you know, under reminds me of, there's like a list about 25 fragrances. Like there's, they remind of so, people of so many fragrances. I don't, I wouldn't say they're like dupes on anything, but they just don't, they don't have anything new to bring to the table. It's just like cute bottles. I can imagine that they, these would sell, like if they were, you know, say that you would go to a trendy hair salon and you would have these on the counter. I think they would probably sell to customers, you know, that might have a little more money and pick something up when they're there anyway. You might not be that much into niche. And then you try something like vanilla black pepper. That one's actually really good. It reminds me of a lot of other things like I'll dwell. It reminds me of, it reminds me of, what was it? I mean, there's, there are a few more that I think kind of have the same vibe. It's a spicy, spicy vanilla. And I think you can really smell both vanilla and black pepper, but vanilla is mostly dominant. I'm not really a vanilla person, but I really like this one. It had a really nice dry down. Let's see, I think it has some florals. Um, yeah, it he heliotrope rose in the middle and that an orange blossom in the top. And then it has, a, has an unusual note called willow herb. Willow herb or fireweed in American English. It's called, oh, Rose Bay Willow Herb. It's called Rose Bay Willow Herb. I've never seen that in fragrance before. It has some resins, black pepper. It's kind of like a nice, good, spicy vanilla. That one I actually, um, 
I don't know if I would recommend it. I mean, the price point's not bad, 150 euro. Well, it's only 50 mil, so it's not, I mean, it's not cheap. I wouldn't call it cheap, but at least they offer 50 mil, which is nice. Um, so I think that probably would be my second choice from the box. Um, I'll just comment on them briefly. Geranium balsamic note is kind of a masculine leaning um, geranium, slight, like slightly rosy fragrance with, uh, I think it has like juniper berry. It's kind of classic masculine, office safe, pleasant fragrance. Would be really nice on a man. I wouldn't wear it. The vanilla black pepper I talked about, that was like my second favorite. Sea salt and caramel was a scrubber. The opening is absolutely awful. I think the notes really clash, and there's so many in that category that are better, like the Shea and Blue Salt Caramel, I think it's called that. That was really nice. Has like a popcorn vibe. I'm kind of on the fence about that one too, but at least it's not horrible like this one. And then there's uh, Curacao Bay from Jacques Fat, which I really like. Then I love Musk Palawan that I have myself, which is a, was not really a caramel fragrance, but it's a sea definitely like C notes. So it would be a good replacement for this one. That one's slightly more expensive from Lorga. But this one was, what did I write about it? There's something about like the, the, the clash of notes. It reminds me a little bit of like 4160 Tuesday's Kiss Me Quickly, which I really thought was bad. Um, this one's bad. I mean, I, it, it, it really good performance though. It was like really like, like, you know, sending little puffs off of my hand and I finally had to go and, and really scrub it off. And at least it, it scrubbed off pretty well. And then the Yellow Rose and Incense is, um, let's see, that one's compared to, let's see, Yellow Rose and Incense. Um, I, can't, God, I can't remember. I think that's the one that they compare to Portrait of a Lady. It's kind of like a, and I don't, you know, I don't like rose. I'm not so into rose fragrances, so I really can't say. It's not bad. It's, uh, it has oud in it. But Oud Patchouli Rose, I'm just, you know, too bored with that, that style of fragrance, so I can't really review it. Uh, I wouldn't be doing it justice. It's not a bad fragrance. It's, it's not a very animalic Oud. I don't know if I could even say that it had Oud in it if I had not known. Okay, and then there's one called, I'm going to get back, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my favorite in a minute. Coffee White Flowers was all coffee. Coffee and cocoa and chocolate and maybe a little milkiness in the dry down. The white flowers are really in the background. And then my daughter walked by when I was trying it and I said, you know, what do you think of this? And I had them all over my arm and she said, oh no, she said. And she says, it smells like concentrated pea mixed with coffee. So that, that gives you, that doesn't sound so great. I was actually quite enjoying it up until she said that. And then when she said that, I was totally getting the same vibe. Um, but it does smell a little bit like, like coffee addict or, you know, cat, what's it called, um, Car Picot Cafe, or, you know, these coffee fragrances that I don't find, like, perfume word. They're not, like, perfumey. They're more like an experience, like a conceptual kind of perfume. I wouldn't wear something like that. I don't want to come across as a, as it, some, as a coffee shop, like a walking coffee shop. No way. And the florals are just barely there, I would say. Okay, and then there's one called Olibonum and Gardenia. Um, it's red juice. This one smells very, very non-unique. My friend Clara has like a hundred perfumes that smell just like this and that she all loves so much. And this is also her favorite from this box. But I could see that this doesn't fill a void in her collection. She's got like, already has so many in this category. But it has a very unusual... Um, I'm saying that it's not unique, then I'm saying it's very unusual, but it smells to me, because I've really spent time with this one, like it's soapy and incensey at the same time, which I find to be kind of a little odd. Um, and what was it now again about it? Um, yeah, there's, there's supposed to be coconut in here, coconut and neroli. Uh, I can't get any gardenia. So Olibonum Gardenia, I think, is a little bit misleading, but it's very light. It's a very light incense, soapy incense. Um, I, I wouldn't wear it. I just think it's not very interesting to me. Then there's the red wine, one called Red Wine Brown Sugar, and it is also very dark red, just like red wine. Um, it's nice. It's nice, but it's like, I don't know, it also has 
like like a hundred fragrances that people say it reminds them of. It has liqueur, leather, caramel, brown sugar in the base, and it, it I mean, it smells a little bit like wine. It has dried fruits, raspberry. It's just like not my style of fragrance at all. I don't like anything with dried fruit typically. Maybe it reminds me a little bit of Luce Solaberg, and I just gave that the rest of that away to a friend. I never wore it. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't like. Now, like, if I don't love a fragrance, it's just going to sit there and collect dust. I, so I do try to find another owner for it. Um, and then there's one called Dark Vinyl Musk, which has, like, a, a nice purple color. It's a very smoky musk. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way, they have. there's also a sandalwood neroli, which is quite nice. Kind of a creamy, smoky sandalwood. The, the neroli is hardly no, noticeable. A little bit masculine. I wouldn't wear it. I mean, I don't think any of these are like, wow, wow. Um, the musk is not bad. It's just, to me, it's a little bit boring. It reminds me of a hundred other things. But I'm going to spray, again, now the eucalyptus patchouli. Because this I wore this morning, and I really liked it. I really liked it. I like eucalyptus. Um, see if I don't have anything right here. This was... Someone had written on Fragrantica, like it's a, it's non, it's, it's kind of non-perfumey. It's more like aromatherapy. And I understand exactly what they're talking about. Like this to me is not like a pretty fragrance that would make me feel feminine for like a big party or something like that. It's more of a enjoy at home on the couch. Or I think someone had written somewhere, like in one of these articles on Fragrantica, that it's kind of one of these uh, that you put on to to raise your energy levels. I really find this interesting, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the notes. This one I think was the only one worth spending time on. I might actually give it another wear. Tomorrow I'm gonna to return it to my friend, that whole set. So I didn't, I, I wasn't given that set from anybody. I, I got to borrow it from a friend. It has eucalyptus, cardamom, and pink pepper in the top. And then it has in, uh, frankincense, olibanum, which I think is the same thing, isn't it? Woodsy notes, patchouli, moss, and cedar. That's the mid and the base. It's herbal. It's green. The patchouli is not like hippie. It's 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 a little toned down, I would say. I really like this. It's kind of menth mentholated, but but I, I wouldn't wear this to an event or like out with the, for a dinner or anything like that. I would wear this at home and just kind of like enjoy it on my own. That's, it's that kind of fragrance. I have a few of those kind of fragrances, and I mean, I, but I, I, don't, I don't think I would go out and pay this kind of money for this. I don't need it. I've got other things that are interesting enough for me. So this little, I, I think I will wear that uh, eucalyptus patchouli one more time before I give it back, but that is it from, from Boho Boco Perfume. Um, anyway, I was I gonna tell you something more. Um, I, yeah, yesterday I, I'm supposed to like not buy perfume, but I saw like on our equivalent to eBay, like a bottle of Chanel number no. five or premier, like one of the flankers, the one that I like the most was kind of like, there was only 13 minutes left of the auction time. And I decided to place a bit. I thought I'll never get it. And it's going to follow what happens these last minutes. Um, and then I got it and I, and I'm, I'm paying now, like, what did I pay? Like 50, 60 euros for a 50 ml bottle that is hardly touched which is a great price um so you know maybe i'll sell it to someone else if i don't like it or if i don't if i find it boring it's kind of that you know french style aldehydic powdery floral perfume with some iris i, th I think i'll like it it's, it's i think it'll be a good easy reach for me not that i not that i needed it at all but anyway now at least i've gotten rid of a few perfumes i feel so much better getting rid of guidance it was just too hard to wear. It was too heavy. It was just, it just took over. There was something like not natural about a perfume that just lasts forever. Um, it just stayed on, it, it, it kind of, and that spread, it just, it, the sillage was so long. Like, I don't know if I wanna, you know, like if I would go dancing and that thing would, I would be like, you know, like a, I don't know, like a living perfume shop wandering around the dance floor. No, I, I just found that it, was, it was too hard to get the right dose. I, I have a fiver. I can wear it when I want, but I think that fiver is going to last me for 10 years. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. 
But um, I'm going to try to lay low now with purchasing. Um, I'm also trying some other new things. I have two more like sample sets that I'm going through. I'll tell you a little bit about those in kind of a summarized way. I don't find that like going through, it seems like my channel is not really about reviewing whole houses of fragrances and doing like a buying guide because I'm like, I don't do this as my full-time job, so I can't spend that much time. So if I find, you know, eight out of 10 fragrances boring, I'm not gonna wear them like three times each. And that's what you have to do, I think, to give a decent review. So I think I'm this channel is kind of heading in another direction now. I think the honesty part of my, the title of my channel is maybe more important now than it has been like I really want to keep stay on this track and not let myself, you know, be uh, influenced by other people or companies or hypes. I need to try for myself and see, you know, what, uh, what works for me. I guess my phone has not been turned off. Sorry about that. I have a few messages to look at. Well, that's what I'm going to try to do and maybe just kind of shed some light on what I find is a problem in FragCom. Like these, um, there's this, there's this woman, um, or I, I, I was thinking about doing a video on it, but I might as well just bring it up now. Her name is Monica Kioch. Uh, it's like C I O. I don't. She she spells her name. I think she, with a C H on the end or something. And she's had like a collaboration with a perfume house, um, and I think it is. Is it Navitus? I think it might be Navitus. The same one as Redolescence, and she has like. They've, they've collaborated with her to create some fragrances, yet she has never on her channel spoken about these fragrances. And that I find a little strange, you know? If you have your name on something, why would you not talk about it? Uh, so I asked her, like in, in one of the comments, you know, why I would like to hear your reviews on these fragrances, and she didn't, she hasn't answered that. So I, I, there, are, there are some strange things going on in FragCom. I might, might dig a little bit more into that. I just find these things interesting. I wish there was a place where you could, you know, go and find more of an unbiased review. But, you know, it's all about opinions anyway. So even if, you know, even if you are like a journalist that writes perfume articles, it's still just this journalist's opinion, you know, just like a restaurant critic or, a, you know. And I know I've had some really interesting comments from you guys in my feed about this and uh, you know I think to a certain extent you just have to accept that this the, this is the reality and um, those kind of opinions are not e either easy really that they, they have problems also so what you need to really do is to get your nose on things and I just wish that would be easier like I wish I could somehow sample things from Javoy without it costing me so much I would like to you know try through the whole shop and without going to Paris because it's too complicated. But I guess I have enough here at home, but I'm just, you know, I'm always on the hunt for something new. Um, yeah, but now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna wash everything off from Boho Boco. And um, yeah, the patchouli's good though, or the eucalyptus one. I really like eucalyptus. Someone's, I think someone said that this smells, eucalyptus patchouli smells just like a, like a special herbal tea um, that had a name and everything like that tastes, or if it, I don't know if it was the same smell or it was the same taste, but yeah, it smells like an herbal tea in a way. I like it. I really like it. I'll tell you one more uh, fragrance that I'm really enjoying right now that I bought earlier this summer is Histria, H-I-S-T-R-I-A from Wesker Perfumes. Um, this German, or they work out of Germany. They're, they're not German. They're like Croatian and Slovenian or something like that, but this fragrance is really, really nice. I'm really enjoying it. It smells like, it's like super piney and dark green and it has orange blossom, like a big blast of orange blossom. And it's such a nice morning fragrance and the performance is incredible. Like it is, it really projects and it's, it's a little tiny bit incense-y and it's kind of gives you this foresty feeling, but not at all in a more in a perfumey kind of way. Like it's, I, I don't think I would wear it to like a big party either, but like definitely out for a lunch in the summer, going to the beach, um, going to like a summer daytime event, for sure I would wear it. I feel really fresh and like, it's so refreshing, this fragrance. Um, you should go check it out, read the notes. 
Um, the notes are not the same on for Grantica or Perfumo, I think, is on their own web page. Wesker, W-E-S-K-E-R. It's a very small house, but I think they got some attention um, at Exans in Milan. Um, and I, they have their, I think the bottles are a little bit overdone. You can, you know, look at pictures of them. They're kind of like gold and like, they have their signatures like on the front. Uh, I like a little bit more simplistic packaging. I think this is what I like about this. It's so, it's so nice. And I, this, this kind of, you know, Dior exclusive kind of packaging really speaks to me. I, I like that type of, um, no fuss kind of presentation. I don't like, I mean, Roja, that kind of presentation almost makes me mad. I think it's just really, really silly and I just don't buy it. And like Fragrance du Bois, it's too much. It's too much. Uh, there's no reason to go there. <laughs> I just love having this channel where I can just vent about my own opinions. <laughs> um, anyway, please let me know. Do you have any, um, any experience with Boho Boco? And do you have a favorite from here? It'd be nice to hear it before I, you know, before I pass these on tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be getting some new decants tomorrow. That's going to be nice. I'm going to be getting like Guerlain and another one from Sorsinelli, and it'll be great. I'll have some new things to review for you guys soon. All right, guys. Talk to you later.